Hey guys, Benelli Jamal here. I'm a solo acoustic guitar player. Uh, I really focus on more percussive elements, uh, slapping, harmonic slaps, and tapping uh, things as well. Um, the example that we'll be kind of going over here today is uh, part of my song called Lucid Draw. And uh, this is in a different tuning as well, not in standard tuning. This is in Dadgad. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with it, uh, it's going to be D from the lowest string. We're going to have an A after that, then a D, then a G, then an A, then a D. So it should, should sound like this. So the first thing that we're going to be doing here is uh, combining two things, combining both a strumming followed by a tap and then more strumming as well. Let me play the example for you once, then we'll break it down for you. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be looking at here is the chord with the left hand that we're going to be holding. Um, I'm using my first finger here on the second fret of the G string, or the third string really. Then I'm using my fourth finger here, oh, sorry, my third finger on the fourth fret of the D string. So now this gives us a really, really nice open D chord that we can play, and it sounds like this. So after I, um, I strum this with all my fingers kind of striking downwards like this, as you can see, I'm doing a down followed by an upstroke and then a mute hit. The way I'm doing this mute hit here as well is that I'm using my palm here on my right hand at the same time brushing my strings down on it. But make sure that when you're, when you're, when you're striking them with the fingers down that all the strings are muted so we get this kind of sound. So if I didn't use my palm, we would get this. So as you can see, it's all on the palm really to kind of get that kind of mute percussive hit. So now we've got this. We're going to go a down, up, strum, down. Then we're going to go up again. So now we have this. Okay. After this, we're going to be using our two hand tap, our two finger tap, I should say, uh, on, the, on the B string, or the second string rather, and the fourth string. This is going to be using my first and second finger here together in conjunction. Now just a little, little, little tip on tapping, make sure that your, your thumb on the right hand is always resting on, uh, above the neck just for more control and stability. Um, again, if you're ever playing live or standing up or anything like that, it gives us more control and uh, feel, makes us feel a bit more at ease, I guess. So now let's have a look at this example more time, uh, following uh, the strumming that we just did, then the tapping. So now we have this. So as you can see, I did a strum followed by that X again, and then we're going to be tapping and then releasing it while keeping the left hand fingers placed on that same D chord. So one more time, it sounds like this. Okay, after this, we're going to be incorporating some new elements with the left hand, some bass lines. So as you can see, I did the tapping, released it, then put my first finger on the A string on the fifth fret, then slide it over to the 7th fret and then release it. So really slowly it sounds like this, with the tapping. Now let's play it in the actual song. Okay, after we do this we're going to bring our 1st finger to the 2nd fret and then our 3rd finger to the 4th fret. So then just to kind of continue that bass line. So now we have this. Okay, now let's try it from the beginning one more time just to make sure that we've got everything. So as you can see, when I'm tapping with my first finger on the low D string here, and then using my third finger on the fourth fret, at the same time as I'm tapping my right, my left hand finger, I'm going to be tapping my two fingers on the seventh fret of the second string and the fourth string. So now we have this. Make sure that you tap and then release with the right hand fingers as well. So really slowly we have this now.
Okay. After we do this, we're going to be going back to the first, uh, the, the second fret on the D string with our first finger here on the left hand. So now, and then after that, we're going to be following that with the third finger on the fourth fret. So now we have this. Okay. As you can see, everything is right followed right after one another. All basically just eighth notes here. So now let's try to looking at the next part. So after we're tapping with the first finger and the third finger on the D string, we're going to be going back to the tapping with the right hand on the second uh, string and the fourth fret. Uh, sorry, second string and the fourth uh, string here as well on the fifth fret. So as we're doing the, the hammer on with the first finger and the third finger here, we're going to be tapping with the right hand and then sliding this over to the seventh fret and then releasing it. Okay, so now this is how it sounds really slowly. Okay, one more time, even slower maybe. Okay, now after this, we're going to be looking at some chords here. After we do this, we're going to bring, I'm using my second finger here to kind of use a, a hammer on technique on the fifth fret. Now, my second finger is double jointed, uh, so, so I'm able to do this fairly easily to bar three uh, strings at once. Um, if you're not able to do this, you can actually substitute that for all three fingers. You can use your second, third, and fourth finger to get that same kind of chord. It's the same thing as this. So whichever one's easier for you, uh, feel free to use that one. So after we do the, the sliding uh, uh, technique here, we're going to be following that with, with a tap, um, a hammer on with the left hand second finger. After that, we're going to be strumming it down as well. So let's play it from the beginning one more time. Okay, once again, really slowly. Great, so now as you can see, uh, once we get that second finger to be pushed down all the way, um, I'm using my first finger as well on the fourth fret of the G string just to complete that chord and make it sound a little bit, little bit richer. Okay, now after this, after this we're going to be moving that exact same shape over to the seventh fret, okay? So after this chord, the fifth, the fifth fret. Now what I'm doing here as well, whenever I'm strumming this chord, I'm, only, I'm always going to use the first finger and bend it down a little bit. Okay, so like this. Now this is a quarter note, a quarter tone, which uh, could be uncomfortable for some of the people uh, in the Western culture anyway. Um, but it's a really cool sound and really sounds a little, little Eastern as well. So again, you can do a full bend or half bend, whichever one uh, suits you better. So let's try it from the beginning one more time and just to review everything that we've just done. So as you can see, I've added after that little bend with the first finger, I'm going to be using my first finger on the right hand and tapping it on the seventh fret of the D string. Um, this will give me a nice little, little uh, full sound as well. So this is how it goes. Really slowly again. Very important that when you're tapping, make sure that you release into the note that you're holding with the left hand. So if I'm tapping the ninth fret here with my first finger, I'm going to release it to the seventh fret that's already held with the second finger. Right? So let's have a look at this from the very beginning one more time. Okay, as you can see, after I strum that all, I'm going to be doing, following that by a harmonic slap on the 12th fret. Now with this harmonic slap, I'm always using the palm here with my right hand to reinforce it and get a nice rich sound. So let's try it from the beginning now, maybe up to tempo, and just to see how it really sounds.
So as you can see, um, after this chord here, uh, and, and the tap as well, I'm actually doing a few strums to introduce it back to the beginning. This is again something that's loopable that you can just loop over and over again just to practice and get it nice and tight. So after this little, little uh, bend here that I'm using with my first finger, I'm doing a few strums here up and down, then going right back to the beginning again. So this is how it goes, all the way through two or three times. So as you can see, combining all these different elements together, we can get a nice, uh, rich sound. And to the listener, uh, most of the time, if we're not looking at a video, we get the illusion that there's two or three guitars being played at the same time. But uh, that is just an illusion, and both you and I know that the potential of this kind of style can really, really uh, help one express themselves better and more accurately, I think, than some of the other styles, maybe. Um, again, so we've got percussive elements, slapping elements, some tapping as well. If we combine and fuse them all together, we can get a nice, rich, beautiful sound.